Many times in my life, in my life, I do not recognize my, all my life is spiritual. When I need a breakthrough, man, my life is spiritual. Really, when, but, but, you know, when, when I need a healing, my life, baby, it's spiritual. But, but other times when I focus on money or I focus on, on that job and the stress or I focus on, on my addiction issues, man, I have a big sign posted, no spirit allowed here. My ego's got control, baby. Ego served only here. Other people in my life who I want to tell how to live, you know, no spirit there, man. I got it. When the outer effects to my life, the outer effects are to my liking, I tend to overlook spirit. But then something happens, you know, something turns my life upside down, and there I am running to the material side of the tracks, and I cross over those tracks to the spiritual side of my awareness for a brief visit. Metaphorically on my knees, please God, help me. And as soon as I get, you know, a little control over the situation, I'm right back seated at the effects only side of the counter. This isn't just me. We all do this. Duality in any form enforces separation. And no one of us in our life wants to separate our higher power from the effects. No one of us wants to leave our higher power out of our job, out of our relationship, out of our attitudes, out of our beliefs. And most importantly, no one of us wants to leave our higher power out of our decisions. In a real sense, everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Today's call is for spiritual integration. To not have a spiritual side of our life and a material side of our life. To not have a side of our life where God, as we understand God, can sit at the counter. But we don't need no God over here. We've got it all under control. And so this duality, it is not real, but if it exists in our mind... If that's what we perceive, if that's how we make our decisions, then it expresses. Causes are in our mind, effects are experienced outside. And so if we live with this duality in our mind, we can expect reasonably to express duality in our life. Today's call is for spiritual integration. We begin this how? How? How would we begin this? Well, simply paying attention. Simply observing if there are parts of our own inner mind that we have metaphorically segregated the Holy Spirit out of. Segregated our higher power from this area of our life, from this relationship, from this decision-making process, from our finances. Where in our life have we excluded God? Is our ego getting in the way? Is the past showing up and making decisions for us that we didn't like when we made them back then? Are we defaulting to some low self-esteem that isn't the truth of who we are, but somebody told us this is how we recognize and we begin a healing? We begin a healing by simply paying attention. In our own history, in the history of this country, we all know integration was not attained easily. In fact, it was achieved through civil disobedience. Civil disobedience. And civil disobedience, it's not a coup d'etat where you overthrow the government with arms and with violence and in a war. No, 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 no. Civil disobedience employs nonviolent passive resistance in order to bring about wider attention to the injustice. Once everybody's aware of the injustice, you know, spirit is always going to fall on the side of justice. That's in spirit's nature. But if it's not 
aware. If there's no awareness, that is the role that civil disobedience plays. And when you are civilly disobedient, you risk retaliation. And in us, we're talking about our own consciousness. Our ego is going to retaliate. It doesn't want to give up control. You risk imprisonment, which means being stuck in that place, being feeling like there's no way out, and you just have to trust nonviolent, passive resistance and trust. See, civil disobedience brings about change. That's what brought about the entire civil rights movement, and it continues to bring about true and eternal change in this world today. Today, you and I, we can use this same philosophy to integrate spiritual truths in our life. Just like Jehoshaphat 3,000 years ago, we can stand in any seeming battle and not fight. We can stand in the battle and declare, the higher power in me will fight it. All I need to do is stand in the truth of who I am. We can choose nonviolent spiritual resistance to respond when chaos and confusion shows up in life. But now if we do, if we make this choice with awareness, we began saying, how do I do this? Awareness is the first thing. The second is be conscious of the choice we make. If we do, I am telling you, we may have to sit in at some places and some counters and some situations where we are not comfortable and we are not welcome. And we might just have to sit there and let the universe take care of the situation and not run from the pain or medicate it through many of life's addictions. You know, if we want to do this, if we want to integrate spirit in our life, we might even have to register more and more positive voting ideas. We may even have to cross into metaphorical Mississippi where those ideas aren't welcome. And, and then when we register them, we actually have to let these positive forward-thinking ideas vote when decisions in our life have to be made. We can't exclude them from the poles of our life decision. We will even have to refuse to give up that seat once in a while, that front seat that drives our dreams when the old way, the old ego, fear, doubt, insecurity is telling us, get to the back. You can't achieve that goal. No, we'll have to stand our ground.